All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this 40 series torque converter. Um, so what I want to talk about is just how to set these things up properly when you're really pushing them to the limit. Like if you're using them over the max horsepower, like if you're using it on a big block or something that you feel that is over 18 horsepower. I think they're rated for like minimum 6.5 to like 18 horsepower. Um, now this is like a cheap eBay torque converter. Um, the cheap eBay torque converter, it's the same as the Comet torque converter, except the, the eBay one is, it doesn't have the welds on it. Um, now, what I wanna talk about is, uh, you know, setting these up, how to get the most performance out of it. I've made a few other videos on this, uh, maybe three or four different parts of this. Um, if you want to know more about this that you don't hear from in the video go through my playlist I have something a playlist set up um, labeled torque converter um, If you need something, you know, I have a playlist called carburetor torque converter block cylinder head um, It's pretty much broken down um, Pretty easy for you to find stuff and figure out if you go through my playlist so um now, in the other videos, I've talked about, you know, how to increase your um, engagement speed, um, you know, how to increase your shift speed. So engagement comes from the primary, your shift comes from the secondary. Um, now, in the other uh, videos, I think I told you that um, I had drilled, so uh, I believe this right here is the stock hole. There's three that come stock, one uh two and three they're not these two aren't drilled this one is so this is on the uh cheap ebay ones this is where uh the hole is drilled um on the comet ones um there's only this one hole there is no other holes uh so that's how you can tell the comet ones now i did have an original set of comets on here that i took off um they were just plain flat out worn out uh the metal pulleys um uh, were just worn down where the belts had you know worn grooves into the pulleys from just hitting so hard I really beat the crap out of these things I've had this for about two weeks um, You know already blown the the driver out. You can see where it's dented um, The weights have been sling slinging out so hard that they've actually dented the outer housing um, I've gone through about six or seven belts so far. I just put this belt on. This belt here has two runs on it. Let me see if I could take it off for you. Uh, I just um, I just really push these things pretty hard. I'm way outgrown anything with the name Comet on it. Uh, you, you can see this belt here. Uh, hold on, let me uh, unscrew this and uh, show you what's going on. So, here we are. So here's the pulley. Um, this has two runs on it. You can see I'm really overpowering these belts. Now this, this my friends, is not an original Comet belt. So um, there is 100% a difference between a Comet belt and a non-Comet belt. So let me actually talk about that real quick. So this is a non-comet belt. Now if you go into my other videos, I've talked about some of the obvious differences that you can see between the comet belt and the not comet belt. Now, when you look at this belt right here, you see how all the strings and stuff are hanging out? I've never seen a comet belt look like that, and I'm sure other people have, but I just personally haven't. Um, this is one of the cheap $20 belts. So, um, what are some of the differences? So this is a Chinese cheap belt right now. They all say that they have a Kevlar pyramid core. Now, when you even talk to a really good belt company, specifically good belt company, um, what they uh, use is a really good um, Kevlar pyramid core. And those pyramid cores are what give the, the, the Kevlar cores are what give the belts really good strength and rigidity. Now, if uh, a belt doesn't have that, it's going to be crap. 
Now even these cheap Chinese ones say they have that and uh, they probably do because it prevents stretch. But what other things make up these belts are, you know, the types of rubber that they're made out of. Now I can tell you I put this belt on two passes, the thing's gone. You could see how much actual belt it left on the pulley itself. Um, the pulley is like black. Um, the Comets don't really do that. So these just have a cheap um, type of rubber. And that cheap rubber, the rubber is what gives them grip. Um, the Kevlar is what gives them stretch strength so they don't stretch. So this might have the Kevlar in it, but you could tell by the looks of this belt, this thing is crap. Um, this is the $20 belt. So another thing about belts and what I just signed up for, if you buy the belts on Amazon and you buy an original Comet, depending upon who you buy it from, you can add a warranty protection plan to that belt for like $8. Um, so you might want to look into that. I'll try to put a link in my description um, to those belts. I'm not really sure how any of this stuff works, but uh, you know, if you're destroying belts like I am, you know, for $8, you know, you never have to buy a belt again, so you might want to check that out. So, the cheap eBay torque converters and all these types of Comet 40 series torque converters. So, you can adjust the driver by lighter weights, tighter springs that will raise your engagement, so that way you can get your stall up high, because when you're using big cams, methanol, stuff like that, you know, uh, you just can't really get the engine to idle below 1,000 RPMs, or... I don't know what my idle is at, my Micron, um, I think it's around like 2200 so I think I have the stall set to around three grand. Um, and that's where I need to be. So on the back pulley, um, what I did, so here was the original hole, I drilled out another hole like way back here. There was a hole here that I drilled out, you see the, these are all on the same height and then there's one in here lower. See that there's a corresponding here. Well, this isn't drilled through all the way. That comes stock in that position. It's uh, it's not drilled out, but there's a hole there. So there was one the same that wasn't drilled out, but there was a hole there there. So I drilled that out, and it turns out you couldn't get the spring to go through there. It was a little bit weird position. So I ended up drilling this hole here and putting the spring in there. So that way, when I put the, so when I preloaded the spring and put it on and put the the clip in, um, the spring had a lot more tension on it now some of the better uh, secondary clutches or driven pulleys as some people like to refer to them as um, you know some of the better ones come with these holes already drilled in them so you can adjust them uh, you know yourself and you know because adjusting the tension on that spring is uh, is mandatory you know if you put bigger wheels or something like that you need a little bit more the the more tension you put on that spring the more like torque that you'll be able to get out of your torque converter. Anyhow, what ends up happening is you need to find a balance between how much tension you put on this spring and the engagement through this. So what ended up happening to me was, and uh, uh, so I lighten the springs, uh, I lighten the weights, I put um, uh, heavier springs to raise the engagement. And then I take this and I, I put a lot of preload on this spring and I put it on. So what ended up happening was it ended up stretching the belts. And why it stretches the belts is because you end up, the, the two pulleys end up fighting each other. Now by raising the engagement and tightening that rear spring, you are really leaning, what I call leaning on the torque converter. And you can get a lot of power out of them, but you're going to be destroying belts. So. Um, what you got to do is you got to get like a, a therm, like a, one of those digital infrared thermostat guns. Um, so you can like look at this, see what temperature it is, see what temperature that is, check the belt temperature. And uh, right now where I'm kind of, so I drilled a series of holes after that. So after I had it like all the way tight and I was stretching belts, I put it back to the stock position. I noticed that uh, it wasn't stretching belts as bad, but... Um, now all of a sudden, you know, when it was stretching belts real bad, the secondary pulley was getting super, super hot and the front pulley was cold. So I put it back to the stock position, then all of a sudden the front pulley was super, super hot and the back was cold. So I, I'm using a thermostat now to try to get the pulleys to be balanced. And where it ended up being was a little bit closer to, um, a little bit on the tight side, but you know, just past the middle, 
um, towards the tight side has ended up working perfect for me. Now I'm a 300 pound guy, so you're gonna have to adjust and do this stuff for yourself. This is just a little bit of knowledge on how you can mess with these torque converters. Um, now I will tell you that if you do have an original Comet belt and you do have this set up properly, you shouldn't be having belt problems. Um, even me as a 300 pound guy, uh, you know, the belts seem to last somewhat of a, you know, a decent amount of time. Some where it's doable. Um, just don't go and get these cheap eBay $20 belts. Uh, they're just not worth it. Unless you're only making a few horsepower or you got this on a small block or you, you have an unmolested uh, stock engine still with the governor, sure, that's fine. But once you pull the governor and you're spinning these things hard and you're really putting some big gear in to try to get the most out of these things, you know, uh, you just end up blasting belts away. So you got to rock um, original Comets. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description below for where I can, where I got the cheapest belt on Amazon and there's a warranty where, you know, you I pretty much you buy this $8 warranty and then it's just, you know, free belts for life as far as I'm concerned. I got two of them. Uh, I've had one, so I bought another one, and when I bought the second one, I got the warranty. So that way, once the once that belt comes in, you just take your old one off and send that one in and put the new one on. And then once that warranty belt comes back in, you just take the one you got on off and you keep swapping them out for life. You know, you'll end up getting four thousand dollars worth of belts for eight bucks. So um, that's just a little tip from Paul from Paul's Carts. Uh, I'm Paul. Hope you guys liked the video. If you liked the video, you found this useful. Uh, click like um, and uh, you know if you're not subscribed already think about subscribing got over a thousand subscribers now um, you know it's amazing to me I can't believe I got that so thank you for subscribing so um, you know until next time I'm Paul from Paul's Carts and have a nice day